Okay. It is 7.04 on the 14th of Monday. It's time to call this meeting to order. Uh, we have the opening prayers number two now. So, um, Mr. Taylor, if you'd lead us in tonight's opening prayer. Dear Lord, look over everyone in this community and look over our leadership here in the city building and those of us at home. Make sure everybody is safe uh, and, you know, just give us the guidance and wisdom and the strength to make the best decisions possible for the city and all of its citizens. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, one visible, and just for all. All right. Okay. Miss Harmony, if you'd call the roll. Smith? Yes. Taylor? Taylor, I see anything. Lord, can you hear us? You're muted. Here. <laughs> Sherman. Here. Dumpy. Here. Grant. Here. Mr. Booth. Mr. Booth will not be here. Jim. Here. Motion to excuse Mr. Booth. Second. Yeah. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 I think I might have voted for somebody to start with. Yes. I, I think you voted for me. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. No worries. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from last minutes, last week's meeting, the last meeting we had? No. Did anyone get them? I didn't get them. I, got them. I didn't get them either. I think that's okay. in the emails. We'll try that for the next time. Okay. All right. Do we have any citizens' comments, Scott? Nothing yet. Okay. All right. Uh, we have any business and organizational comment? Okay. Uh, committee discussions or meetings? Uh, we had a finance meeting on the 7th, but it was very short. We just went over the um, 2021 budget. All right. Police department update. Mr. Fitch, you're on. Yes. Um, I got some statistics. I don't know if they're up there yet. You Which guys one do you want first? Which one do you want first? Um, it doesn't matter. You put one up there and I'll go over All right, the one that's pulled up there now is the December uh, 2020 monthly tracking for the Nelsonville officers. Um, this is just what we've had so far in the first third of the month. Um, it goes down through there so far for the month. Uh, we've had uh, one person with blue clip. Um, we've had uh, eight criminal reports as far as that goes, 58 calls for service. Uh, and this is a couple days behind. The next 
the next one is uh, the year to date <clears throat> on that one with the same criteria. And this began beginning of October is when we started uh, calculating these. We got 22 people that has been blue slipped and been treated. Um, we've had 277 criminal reports and we've had 1,774 uh, calls for service. And uh, each one of these is breaks down the officers. Um, some of the variances is due to the shifts that they predominantly work. Uh, some shifts obviously are busier than others. Uh, the other one is more of a proactivity. Uh, if you, which one is this one at the top? Okay, this one has. This is your 2020 year to date total. Yes, so the year to date arrest that uh, we was not able to, this is just since October, we've had eight people that we've not been able to arrest that had an active felony war or active warrants. Uh, but due to the Athens County Municipal Court judge's policy, we was unable to arrest them. We've had um, 22 people in the last two and a half months um, that the regional jail has refused due to either for various reasons, either COVID restrictions or, or where they was at capacity. Uh, in the last 10 weeks, we wrote 113 traffic tickets, um, 15 parking tickets. We've had 29 arrests and 67 war arrests for warrants. So our productivity as far as, and in that one there's just the 2020, the December one. So obviously it's a little lesser numbers, but so far this month, um, we've had 25 tickets, um, six criminal arrests and so on with the arrest for warrants. So our proactivity as far as since we started keeping track of these is significantly continuing to increase. Um, we have had, I'm sorry. Oh, um, we have had some issues with uh, some of the homeless people that reside in Nelsonville. We've been um, trying to find them shelter and stuff because obviously with the inclement weather, people's trying to find places. We've had unfortunately a few break-ins uh, we've been able to solve a couple of them, um, but we're trying to stay vigilant and be proactive in that approach. Um, moving forward, um, we've got some training scheduled for the first part of the year for some officers to be trained and instructed for uh, instructors in different areas with the uh, firearm and gun, uh, the taser, and uh, less than lethal use of force. I've also assigned, uh, actually just today, uh, a series of 25 training videos <clears throat> for each officer to complete by February 1st, and it's uh, variances uh, from one degree to another in uh, the EOPOD, it's free training, and each officer will get a certificate for each one of those trainings, and it's different, different areas of law enforcement and investigations. Um, Chris Jones and Attila, the K-9 has been out now this is start just beginning their third week the first week chris was kind of grounded in the sense that he had to get caught up on some training videos and uh, go through some certifications get all these paperwork in order and then last week he had a it was his first real week out with the canine and uh, they did real good he made a nice made several arrests but made one real nice drug arrest and ultimately we executed a search warrant uh, made some arrests and some additional charges are pending um, a couple nights ago, uh, the afternoon and midnight shift also made a drug seizure and executed another search warrant at another residence here in the city. And uh, so within the last you know week, we've executed two drug search warrants unrelated to one another. So those are the kind of things that I want to become the norm. We're kind of moving to that direction. And so I'm pretty pleased about that. That's really about all I've got. Unless anybody has any questions or needs any clarification. I have a question, Chief. Yes. Um, you, like one of the first charts that went up, um, you had a, uh, you, you said there was a, a bar chart that, you know, said there was eight uh, warrants that were out there, but you were not able to obtain them based on um, something from the court system or the judges. Can you clarify a little bit more what you mean by that, that 
you were not able to uh, either serve those warrants or you give us just what a little bit more detail? Yes, what happens is uh, uh, if we have a, an occasion where we run into somebody that has, uh, for one reason or another, and ultimately we check them through the Leeds computer and we find out that they have an active warrant, if they have a hundred if they have a hundred dollar bond or less on that active warrant, the municipal court judge does not want us to arrest them. Um, I had a meeting with him several weeks ago and he's pretty adamant on that. Uh, so at that point we're left with no other alternative um, but to tell them to appear in court the next day, which as you can imagine is not very successful. <clears throat> so that's kind of our hands are tied in that sense because even if the jail has space, the judge has ordered us not to arrest them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Well, that just doesn't make sense. Why bother putting a warrant out for them if we're not allowed to enforce it? Uh, yeah. Um, That's you know, and, and and the the troubling part, I guess, is the warrants themselves typically come out of the Athens County Municipal Court. Yes. So it's a little contradicting in the sense that they put out an active warrant for somebody, but because it's only a hundred dollar bond, um, they don't want us to arrest them. So that's where you see the dilemma is with myself and the officers and uh, some other departments throughout the county I've spoke with, but. Uh, and until uh, you know, we just we don't have an option at this point, so we have to release them and tell them to show up in good faith the following day to court. Yeah, good luck with that. So, do you think that's from COVID? Um, I believe so. Yes, the judge uh, he's trying to eliminate uh, some of the housing issues. It, uh, is what he's told me within uh, the regional jail, and not overwhelm them because with. Uh, the additional people with the, the minor warrants, if you will. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else? Everybody good? Okay, thank you, Chief Fitch. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. All right, with that, we're moving on to the first readings. <clears throat> I have Ordinance uh, 96-11. Need someone to introduce it? I'll introduce it. But, uh, I think oh, I we got the treasurer's report in there, don't we? Yeah. The one that was missed last meeting. Okay, go ahead. We'll do that first. Go ahead, Mr. Mullane. Do, do your treasurer's report. Good deal. Um, I'll go ahead. Maybe you can, everybody can see my screen. I don't know how you can. One second. You might have that report here. You know, Scott. Yeah, I don't know if I have a, a copy sent out. Uh, oh. but, all right. Um, yeah, basically, it's been a pretty. It was a pretty easy month in October. So we got the. Um, let's see the count balances for the end of October is three million two hundred five thousand eighty nine dollars and sixty one cents. <laughs> and next page, and out of that invested funds is one million seven hundred eleven thousand five hundred sixty-seven dollars <laughs> ten cents. And basically, it's been a uh, did a reconciling, and we are dead on for October. So everything looks good on that front. Um, only thing bid letters have come in i only did receive them from two banks and they did come in a day after the deadlines basically been a little bit harder than average to get banks to rebid for cds and such but i kind of been on it trying to get people to get in banks to communicate especially with covid going on and stuff so had to email out letters kind of do follow-ups <clears throat> make sure everybody gets their bids in on time but we did get two letters and out of that, I'm expecting most likely it's going to be the, the rates are going to be much lower, which we definitely got to, we got to schedule a, the second CD matures on the 19th. Uh, so I want to get a, 
investment committee uh, meeting scheduled also so that we can kind of discuss, you know, what to move forward with the city funds and such. But that's all I had. Motion to approve the uh, treasurer's report. Second. Duncan? Yes. Grant? Yes. Ms. Jones? Ms. Jones? <laughs> is, it, is it my turn? Yes. Okay. I think it's uh, Elizabeth. We see your mouth moving, but we can't hear you. You're muted. And now she's gone. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. I'm sure she'll be back on in a minute. <clears throat> Yep, I ordered it. I, Dan introduced 9611. So, but I also want to uh, amend that before it gets read. Wait a minute, which one are we reading, 11 or 20? 11. Oh. 20. My bad, I brought up the no, wrong it's one. It's 20. Oh, it's, it's 20. 20. Yeah, it says 11. It was 11 I know, but it's 20. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what does 20 go on to It's 97. <laughs> Yeah, because that's a senior, right? 20 is a senior. 20 senior. Yeah. I'm doing 96, right? All right, 96. 96, 20. 96, 20. Are we reading at this point? I think Ann wants to make a motion to amend. Yeah, Carl, I want to make a motion to amend. I believe this is the staffing ordinance for uh, making, getting rid of the, the sergeant's position. If I'm not mistaken, Gary? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. And then I uh, also want to amend that to also add the staffing ordinance from nine full time police officers to 10 full time police officers. Is it 10 full time police officers, nine? It's right now we have nine. It's nine officers plus one chief. Okay. Right. That'll be 10. Okay. Eight changes to nine. Isn't that what we just changed last week? No. Yeah, we changed it from nine to eight. No, last time we changed it from nine to eight, it was nine. We changed it to eight and one chief, which would have been nine, because we don't know what the budget's going to hold, and we decided we was going to wait to March or April to the, to try to to see if we had the money to have one more police officer. So that's not what was agreed in finance committee uh, because the chief did stay within his budget. Well, you, you don't know what the finances are going to be. The chief stayed right within his budget. Now. We're not even past the budget yet, and we amended it back to nine total last meeting. Yes, we did. <clears throat> that was the budget. Yeah, we did. Sergeant's positions. The last meeting was only to do with sergeant positions. Is there what Gary's trying to do for the uh, <coughs> union contract? So it should have been uh, eight full time officers, one chief, one part time, and then the clerk. Yeah, I understand. It's just that we had decided, I thought we was going to wait for three months and see what it looks like and go on the next budget when it came for the permanent budget to see how much money we had. We voted that motion past last meeting to do that. Right. The confusion I remember from the last meeting was supposed to do with sergeants only. And now it's the attempt to add the employer, add the ninth. I asked Gary about doing another ordinance, and he said just to amend this one. To add the ninth. I think 
It was just a misunderstanding then because we were well, talking about there's a motion on the table. They're wanting to change it back to nine. Nine Cheap to ten nine. total. Cheap and nine. And then we just changed it from ten to So nine. we're going to get rid of the sergeant's positions, make them all police officers, but we're also going to amend for the ninth officer plus chief would be ten. The staff there's, there's no way that the difference in pay from sergeants to police officers is going to make up the ninety thousand dollars it's going to take to add another officer. We have a big legal bill that we have to pay, and we're sitting here. We don't even have an idea how much money we're actually going to get and where our finances is going to be, and it's just totally irresponsible. Well, I'm all for adding the police officers if we can afford it, but I don't. I can't look at this budget and say we're going to be able to add another ninety thousand dollars to the budget because we changed the pay from sergeant to patrolman pay. Well, uh, we, that's not the only thing we did. We cut out a lot of the overtime with the proper staffing. Well, let's let's have some experience on that for three or four months and then look at it. Mm. it, it it's just you, you just can't. Uh, if we go broke in March or April, what are we going to do? We can't go back and get that money. We 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 have to try to be fiscally responsible. If the money is there in March or April, I'm for it. When I was, Here we go. Strong and threats. We're going to go broke. Well, I was told he didn't even want to do it till March or April. So there's really not. We're really not arguing over nothing other than the ordinance right now. Well, I put a motion on the table, so vote it down then. Well, there's a motion. Can I ask that. a point of order? Can, can I ask a point of order? I thought at the last meeting we passed the ordinance as amended on a first reading, but what we didn't pass was the emergency. Correct. No. Yeah. It, it only takes four to pass the ordinance. Okay. Well, we did. We did. We didn't have the fifth vote to pass it. Well, they got, yeah, I got first reading, so it could be up tonight for second reading. There were, there were only votes for it, so you could neither suspend nor have the emergency. <laughs> the emergency would just be a, a final vote, so it really could not suspend. So it's up for second reading tonight, the way it, the way it is. The way it, without amendment, it's up for second reading. Right, and but Dan has put forth a motion. Tony, if there's a second, then you have to vote on that motion. Who seconded? I don't hear a second. Nobody yet. Nobody seconded yet. That's what I said. You have to have a second. Then I move to adopt the original ordinance. If somebody will second that. Read for the second reading. If there's Dan, what was your motion again? Can you clarify your motion? Well, my Dan, motion. Can you clarify your motion amend. again? So, I, my motion was to amend or, this ordinance or. to not only. I'm asking Dan if he could clarify what his motion. Was. So, my motion was to amend this ordinance to, for one, the, the sergeant's positions is what this ordinance is about, but also to amend it to add the tenth uh, officer for the staffing ordinance that we discussed in finance meeting. I believe and in finance we decided to wait till past the three months. Well, we did not. The uh, Was it only for the sergeant's position that we needed to eliminate, or was there also a lieutenant position that needed to be eliminated? Right. Corey, what we did was change the staffing ordinance. You deleted the lieutenant's position and the sergeant's position and set the staffing ordinance as, at the last meeting, a chief, eight full-time officers, and one part-time officer. No, no. I changed it because I thought that was It was nine officers. It was a chief and nine officers. So the staffing ordinance changed was from nine total to ten. But you want to make it a chief and nine officer? Yeah, so we would notice in the police and fire meeting as well as the finance meeting, and the chief stayed within his budget that was budgeted out. And by eliminating a lot of the overtime, 
that was being wasted, uh, we he was able to find the money for an additional officer, and that was the whole point behind it. The uh, if I could jump in, I know Scott kind of signaled to me that he oh understood where I was going, but uh, well, that comment aside, Dan. But uh, what I was going to say was that the police budget actually decreases even with the tenth officer. I don't, I don't get between council members who are debating, you know, the merits of it. But as far as the finances of it, uh, the police department budget goes down because of the much lower uh, wage due to the turnover, the saved overtime, and, and saved uh, savings on benefits. So the tenth officer, or the additional officer, actually would not increase the police budget compared to 2019 because of the changes in the department that the chief has made. Mr. Fitch, do you have a plan to hire before March? Um, I would like to. I mean, if you're asking me personally, <clears throat> just because uh, there's a potential, the sooner we can get somebody hired, because unfortunately, if, if we would try to hire somebody say today, um, we have to have them, we have to complete their background prior to them starting. We have to have them have their physical done. Well, with COVID, there's several parts they can't just do it all in one day, and they have to do it in several days. With COVID, the testing, sometimes it takes about two to three weeks before they can actually get those two things done, which is plenty of time to get the background done. <clears throat> but then you have to order, or once you know somebody's passed that, you order uniforms and stuff, and you're looking, if we started today, we still six weeks out. Um, so, it, I mean, obviously, it doesn't happen immediately. I, um, but there's also um, some speculation that um, another officer or two, um, that not it, not the new any of the new guys, but some of the other ones are potentially they're in the candidacy for other positions. So what I what I'm trying to guard against is um, us losing a couple just immediately. Um, where we wouldn't have somebody kind of in the hopper, if you will, moving forward in that hiring process. And I guess I do have one more question. Um, when <coughs> we changed to someone to do the paperwork, do you recall us asking if he was going to need another officer? And you said no. I said, we'll do what? I said again. Please. When we changed the one officer and got someone to help with paperwork in the police department, and we did ask about getting another officer and you said no yes about another part time part time officer. yeah my understanding no. Answer is no another part time no i don't want any other part time officers but part time or full time that's still another officer correct well i mean part i mean you would still be adding a, another officer yeah but i, I, I understood, understood your question as part time yeah i was i was, I was under the understanding i was asking well, part time full time it's still a paid position i guess right yeah i didn't know that that's not what I interpreted. I thought you were asking. I just meant money, money wise. Part time, full time, it's still money, correct? It is, but it was different line items on the budget last year, correct? Correct. Uh, still money. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I stand by that. I still don't want a part time officer. Uh, no, you're still at the point of there's no second to dance. Motion is read for the second time with eight officers. I'll second dance motion. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ms. No. Ms. I'm sorry, my network went out for a minute. Can you repeat what we're voting on? Changing the voting. Just from eight to nine. Okay, no. Smith? No. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Duncan? You're muted, Tony. Still muted. Can 
And oh, and he's gone. Doing a sound check, Tony? Are you there? Yep, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yep. Okay. What is your vote on? I the vote amendment? yes for to to amend it. it. It fails. It's still it's three to three, and there's nobody at the seventh vote. It's, yes. Uh, Okay, I I motion to uh, adopt the original ordinance. It's got to be read for the second time. I don't understand why. Go ahead and read it. With the the eight. Okay. An ordinance setting the authorized staff in the police department and declaring an emergency. Not an emergency. Whereas, well, it could be if they have okay. commercial Whereas the staffing in the police department needs to be modified. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that the staffing in the police department is as follows. Chief, eight full-time officers, and one part-time officer. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary to timely meet the funding application deadline and this ordinance shall be full force and effect upon its adopt adoption. Really enacted by council on second on first reading under suspension of the rules 14th day of December 2020. Yeah, there's clerical changes. It's not under suspension because it's the second reading. Okay. Um, second reading tonight, so it's up okay. for adoption of second reading. Motion to adopt. I made a motion to adopt. Second. Second. Okay. You ready for roll call? Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Jim? Yes. Moving on, we have ordinance 97. authorizing the city manager to advertise and accept bids for garbage and recycling and declaring an emergency. Whereas, the Nelsonville, whereas Nelsonville needs to advertise and accept bids for the new garbage and recycling contract. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that the city manager is authorized to advertise and accept bids for a garbage and recycling contract. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency manager pursuant to a high revised code 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary so that 
advertisement can be done in January 2021. This shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Duly enacted by Council on second reading the 28th day of December 2020. I would suggest that we add a uh, suspension of the rules so Scott can get go ahead and get the bids out and we can get this back as quick as possible. So if somebody else gets the bid, they'll be able to make the change by the end of the contract. Is that something you need, Scott? It would be very helpful, please. I make the motion. If somebody else I'll second can. that motion. I second um, the motion. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Still muted. <laughs> Mr. Duffy? <laughs> Yeah. Not that big <laughs> noggin of yours. Yeah, give us a thumbs up for thumbs that. Thumbs up or yes? <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> Miss Grant? <laughs> yes. Miss Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. Mr. Sherman. Mr. Sherman. I think he just dropped off. Duffy. Mr. Duffy. Yes. Okay. Grant? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Hello. Mr. I Sherman? vote yes, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay, moving on, we have ordinance uh Susan, I was a yes by the way. Ninety-eight dash twenty. I need oh, someone. We know. Somebody like to introduce ninety-eight. Okay. I'll introduce it to them. twenty. Thank you. <clears throat> An ordinance extending the income tax mix change of ninety-five not five to March thirty-first, two thousand twenty-one, and declaring an emergency. Whereas the Nelson Nelsonville needs to extend the income tax mix change of ninety-five percent to general fund and 5% to capital improvement fund to March 31st, 2021. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that the income tax mix change of 95% to general fund and 5% to capital improvement fund is extended to March 31st, 2021. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary because the current income tax mix is due to expire on December 31st, 2020, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Will it enacted by council on second reading on the 28th day of December, 2020. Okay, motion to uh, any council discussion on this? Okay. 
Motion to suspend. <coughs> so moved. Motion to suspend. There's no suspension on it. They can put it on if they want. You want to put it on? Will it be in effect by January 1st? Yes. That's why I said emergency clause on it. It's not been on the 28th, it'll still be effective. Okay. It doesn't need to be standard time. Okay, so we don't need that then. That's fine. Okay. Motion to approve. No. <laughs> it's only first no? reading. It's okay. Oh, it's only the first reading. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we don't need a motion to suspend. No. no. Okay. Motion to approve. Tracking along with the the uh, budget. <laughs> so the the last meeting. Yes. Yeah. I just made. All it. right. Motion to adopt. Oh. We're not there. We're, next reading is ninety nine twenty. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Tell me what to introduce it. I'll introduce it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> An ordinance amending the 2020 appropriations ordinance to appropriate from the unappropriated balance the following. The sum of $10,000 from sewer fund number 750 to line item number 750-760-60012 repairs and maintenance. And $7,000 from recreation fund number 300 to line item number 300-250-40010. Operating supply. Whereas the appropriations ordinance needs to be amended to appropriate monies for various needs. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. The 2020 appropriations are amended to appropriate the following sums from the unappropriated balance to the designated line item. The sum of $10,000 from sewer fund number 750 line item number 750-760-60012 repairs and maintenance and seven thousand dollars from recreation fund number 300 to line item number 300-250-40010 operating supplies the total appropriations are increased by oh, seven oh. this ordinance shall become effective at the earliest date provided by law Duly enacted by council on first reading of the suspension of the rules the 14th day of December 2020. Need a motion for suspension. So moved. I'll move. Any council discussion on this? I'll second whoever made the motion to suspend. I believe Elizabeth. I think yeah. Elizabeth made the motion to suspend. The motion to suspend the rules. Okay, I'll second Elizabeth's motion. Okay. Uh, Ms. Dumpy? Mr. Dope, did you did. Yes. Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Mr. Sherman? I think we just lost him again. Uh, yes. All right. Oh. Okay. Motion to adopt. I'll second. second. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Let's go here. Yes. Mr. Sherman? <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> well, 
government? Thumbs up. Okay. Give it a thumbs up. Okay. And who else? Mr. Duffy. It's not a good idea. Yes, okay. Wow, this is painful. Ordinance 100. Uh, I think I got it up here now. Go. Would somebody like to introduce oh, Ordinance 100 20? Yes, I will introduce it. I think there's well, a very that was me. Yep. Okay. An ordinance amending the 2020 program. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> An ordinance amending the 2020 appropriation ordinance. Ordinance 100 dash 20. <laughs> I need someone to introduce it. <laughs> it was already reading it. it was already being introduced. Turn your mouth to be unsupervised. An ordinance amending the 2020 appropriations ordinance to appropriate the following sum of 26000 I'm sorry. That's all. Dollars and seventy nine cents to CARES fund number nine twenty. Whereas the appropriations ordinance needs to be amended to appropriate CARES fund and therefore be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. The 2020 appropriations are amended to appropriate the following. The sum of twenty-six thousand seven hundred eighty-seven dollars and seventy-nine cents to CARES fund number nine twenty. The total appropriations are increased by said amount. The auditor is authorized to request a certificate of resources from the Athens County Budget Commission, and said funds are not appropriated until said certificate of resources is received. This ordinance shall become effective at the earliest date provided by law. Duly enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules, 14th day of December 2020. Motion to suspend. Thank you. Second, Motion to suspend. Second. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> Miss Jones. Yes. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Sherman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Dumpy. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Got it. Yes. Yep. Dumpy. Yes. Is it yes? It's Grant. Yes. Yes. Hello. I don't know what's wrong with this damn thing, but it keeps me off. What's new? <laughs> Is there a motion to adopt? <laughs> Which one are we on? We're on that same one. Oh, yeah. Motion to adopt? Okay. okay. You need a second 
He dropped again. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sherman. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah. Yes. Ms. Grant. Yeah, Ms. Joe. Yes. Wow. Sit up. There's one more. Three. You know yeah. what word is One more point. Thank you for the one I got. Okay, ordinance 100 dash 20. No, that was no. 101. 101. Need someone to introduce it. 101 dash 20. Need someone to introduce it. I'll introduce it. Thank you. An ordinance adopting temporary appropriations from January 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2021. Whereas temporary appropriations need to be adopted from January 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2021. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. Temporary appropriations are hereby adopted for the period from January 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2021, in accordance with Exhibit A, Attached to 2, and incorporated herein by reference. The auditor is authorized to request the certificate of resources from the Athens County Budget Commission, and said funds are not appropriated until until said certificate of resources is received. This ordinance shall become effective at the earliest date provided by law, duly enacted by Council on second reading, the 28th day of December, 2020. <coughs> Motion. Okay. Any public discussion? Motion to suspend the rules. There is no roll call. It's only first reading. I second that. There is no roll call. It's first reading. Okay. You're up to city manager's report. Okay. All right, Scott, go ahead. All right, let me see if I can uh, successfully share a page with you. So I'm going to go ahead and move past that point. I'll come back to it. Um, so there's lots of events happening this week. The Santa Parade starts uh, Wednesday, so that'll be a new event for the city. Santa will be cruising around with fire trucks and I believe PDs escorting them. And there will be it, it's to go around the city to you know help with COVID matters. We've posted several uh, copies of the map up on um, our different various social media platforms. The other thing is this Thursday and Friday is the toy giveaway that we've been doing for several years. Several precautions have been put in place to make sure that we are COVID compliant and then also uh, just safety in general for uh, different protective measures. The other thing is tomorrow we have drive up testing uh, for COVID over at the high school. Several maps online for that as well for all to see. Then there's the food baskets on Saturday that will be delivered to the community. Nelsonville Fire Department still moving forward with that, and uh, they're putting together the boxes uh, in a couple days. Then uh, also, uh, we did civil service testing last week. All everybody who tested for police, fire, and the police chief position all passed the test. The Police department will be conducting interviews next Thursday with the police officers. And uh, I'm happy to report on the police chief, which hopefully we'll share right now for all to see. Let's see what happens.
I have a spinning circle. So hopefully we don't fall off. I just read it. So <clears throat> while that's popping up, what I wanted to share with everyone is the scores. The Chief Fitch uh, scored a 96. Applicant number two scored a 76, plus that applicant had 15 points for military service. And then applicant number three uh, scored a 76. So uh, Chief Finch was the clear leader of that one. Also for the interview, the interview panel consisted of Chief Tench from Hawking College, Chief Barber from the Fire Department, and Auditor Sappington. Uh, I sat in there as well. Unanimously across the board, all three board members chose Chief Finch as their number one pick to be the permanent Nelsonville Police Chief. So it's my recommendation to council to appoint Chief Fitch as permanent police chief. Motion. A motion to appoint Chief Fitch as permanent chief. Second. Uh, Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Take your thumb up, Dan. No, Dan's dropped off again. Dan disappeared again. Yeah, we're not both. Yeah. Yeah, it's approved. Okay. Um, no, I, I, the last thing, uh, congratulations, Chief Fitch. We're glad to have you on board. Uh, the last thing I have is just a sewer update for everyone, situational awareness. We have some pretty significant uh, construction hurdles to overcome right now with different uh, different construction points as far as the main power source going into the plant. Just this past Friday, uh, we had to take emergency actions to essentially rewire uh, one whole half of the plant, which was not planned. Um, thank you for approving that emergency ordinance that took care of a lot of the stuff that's been happening. <clears throat> I, as well as the contractor and everybody else involved, cannot wait for this construction to be finished and get them out of here, um, including them, but it does continue. So, uh, pins and needles for the next week at the sewer plant, and uh, that concludes my briefing. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Uh, we're, to the good, we're to the good of the order. Um, Mr. Taylor, if you'd like to lead us off. Uh, I don't really have anything uh, for good of the order, but uh, since Justin is uh, coaching this evening, I wish he, uh, his girls, seventh and eighth grade, uh, those teams, I wish them well tonight. Hope they do come back successful with uh, some wins for the Bucs. Okay, uh, Mr. Smith. I uh, want to encourage everybody that a vaccine for, for COVID come out. And I think we all can't wait until this horrible situation is over with. But I would encourage everybody to keep being safe. And if they get a chance to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. And let's see if we can put this behind us because... Uh, this has been a tough thing, even sitting here trying to get a council meeting in and staying safe is really, really a, a tough thing. And I'd like to you know, encourage everybody to do everything they can to stay safe, uh, which means not taking extra chances and keeping the hand sanitizer and keeping the mask on, even though I, there's a lot of argument about the mask not working. Big deal. Keep it on anyway. Uh, it ain't going to hurt anything. Uh, so, uh, and that's basically, I just wanted to encourage people to stick in there and let's 
let's hope that this thing's over with shortly. That's all. Okay, um, Ms. Grant. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to ask everyone to please shop locally. Um, it's hard for everybody right now, so let's try to support our town. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Sherman. Hey, hey, where you been all day? <laughs> so I came in because this, our computer kept kicking us off. Uh, I just want to echo what Carla said about my local, support your local city and it'll support you. Miss Jones. Um, I have two things actually. Um, Want to remind people um, if they haven't yet to take down their political yard signs. We're well past 30 days from the election. Time to clear those out. And the second thing is I want to give a shout out to um, Cub Scout Pack two, or 364 from the uh, First United Methodist Church. I had the pleasure of being invited to um, their virtual meeting yesterday to talk to them a little bit about city government and what it means to be a city council member. And they were uh, very cute and had some cute questions about how we uh, do things. So they're learning about government um, for a badge. So I just, um, I told them about the meeting tonight. So some of them said they were gonna try to watch. <laughs> That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, my good of the order is I just like to thank council for um, approving the recommendation of the city manager for Chief Fitch. Um, I believe this is a huge step in the in the right direction for this city, and uh, I just want us to keep moving forward. So, uh, like somebody told me a long time ago, either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. We need people to become part of the part of the solution. So. All right. Um, with that, we have a uh, motion to go into executive session for uh, personnel and legal matters. Uh, Are you able to second that? Who you're inviting oh, in? Second. No, you have to say you're inviting in. Oh, inviting in. Um, I'm going to invite in the city manager and um, uh, the city attorney, Mr. Hunter and Mr. Frank. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Motion to return. Second. I'll second that. Wait a second. Who's taking note? Dan, can you, you since you're in the room? Why is it going to be me? Because I'm in the room. I guess I can. I motion Dan to be the temporary secretary. I second. That. Second. Okay. I second All right, who, who made the motion, Greg? Yeah. Who second? Corey. Okay, got it. I vote yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Corey? Yes. Dan, yes. Uh, Tony? Tony? Yes. 
Elizabeth? Yes. Carla? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, Corey? Yes. Corey? Dan, yes. Tony? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Carla? Yes. Greg? Yes. Me, Jordan, kill it. Thanks, everybody.